Hi, this is Dr. Thomas Rocco from CBD Health Podcast. Today's guest is Jeff Gallagher from ushempwholesale.com. He's going to introduce to me and to others to understand the pitfalls of synthetic cannabinoids. Jeff is the CEO of ushempwholesale.com. His website has great information about hemp and its regulations, not only where he's from in Michigan, but throughout the entire United States. Jeff, thanks again for taking out time out of your busy day to speak with me on CBD Health Podcast. Thanks for uh, reaching out to me again. The last time I tried, I was so far behind on my patient care. By the time I think I got to, it was about 1230. So how are you? Oh, you know, living the dream, right? Living the dream. Same here, same here. But I'm, I'm so happy you came back uh, to talk about the issues and the problems with synthetic cannabinoids. Because when you brought that up, the last time we spoke, I actually, you know, started researching about it. And there's a lot of problems with it. And um, I'm actually happy you brought that up because I really haven't had many people talk about it. But it is, it, it sounds like something that shouldn't even be, be uh, the, should, the public shouldn't be allowed to even use it. The way they well, the cannabinoids it. themselves aren't the problem. It's how right. they're created and the leftover materials that are left in the substances, right? So and that's, that's why I, I just like, I, I looked at what synthetic cannabinoids. It talks about the, this material that's sprayed on like dried plants, and that just but doesn't that's seem not, very safe. There's also synthesized cannabinoids, and those are the ones that are now prevalent in the hemp market. Is that right? So they're taking like CBD isolate, for example, and converting it to a substance called Delta-8 or Delta-10 or THCO acetate. Right. Um, I think there's even one called HHC. And there's a couple other ones, I believe. But what they do is they take CBD, which right. we have a way oversupply of, and convert it chemically into these other compounds that will get you high. Right, get you high. And that's... That's the that delta eight and delta ten. Is that like you said the THC acetate? I, I always see things written as THCA. Is that what they're describing? Well, THCA is the acidic version of THC. That's not synthesized. That's not. See, there's a cannabinoid, and all of these are naturally occurring cannabinoids, mm -hmm. but they're in trace amounts in the plant. So delta eight does not exist in eighty three percent concentrations. Wow. My question is, is what's the other 17%? Right. <laughs> right. So that's, how, do I mean, find, how do we find that out? Well, the FDA just released the thing. There's compounds in these substances that have no, they don't even know what they are. Is that right? So plus the acids used to make them are toxic. If you don't know what you're doing, you can seriously harm yourself making them, but at the same time, seriously harm the consumer. There's already been hospitalizations, I guess. The FDA is trying to crack down on it. Right. This is, seems to be a gray area in the hemp bill. Right, right, right. I, I agree. Because I've had some people ask me about this Delta-8, Delta-10, and it does, it is mind-altering. Oh, for sure. CBD is not. And well, you're, these are any, these cannabinoids, like I said, they occur in nature naturally, right? So they, right. they do occur, but you shouldn't be consuming them in these quant in the quantities that they're being available. My, yeah, I've does, had more than one person tell me of bad experiences on these things. Right. How does the public know where to to know if this is a this type of product? Does it say it on the label or we are getting misled? Well, no, you can go to Florida right now and buy it all over the place. Is that right? Texas, same thing. Is that, oh, geez. I mean, I got a I got a trade show magazine that came in. Any head shop that's not like, well, Michigan made it so you, any THC or THC derivative, you have mm -hmm. to buy in a licensed dispensary. So no one's going to go through the process of taking hemp and turning it into Delta 8 in the, in the Michigan market. Right. Because we have Delta sense. 9 everywhere. Right. right? But if right. you're in Texas or Florida or Georgia or some states that, you know, don't have a recreational or even a medicinal market opportunity mm -hmm. then they're going to go looking for these opportunities to get high right you know so and i mean i guess teach his own on having a product for sale but if you don't know what you're doing you can harm somebody with these right. things and right. if kids get a hold of this stuff you know this is it's, it's more potent than well delta eight i guess they call it marijuana light that's right. what they're, they're i've heard like, that too 
Uh, but Delta 10 and these THCO acetates are four and 10 plus times more strong than THC. So, I mean, if you could only, it'd be, yeah, this stuff is definitely not for, you know, the average consumer. You should right. not be consuming these. Items. And it's not regulated, it seems like any retailer can sell it. Yeah, at the most part. In some states, they've made it illegal, like Michigan, right? You got to be part mm -hmm. of the regulated market. Right. Um, but to keep up with all 50 states, I, you know, I know there's a couple others that have just made it illegal. Uh, Delta 8 sprayed hemp flower is a big thing too. Mm -hmm. So they'll take these, you know, the concentrates and actually spray hemp flower. So they're legally under 0.3% THC, right? but they're coated in Delta 8. That's what I was reading about this whole sprayed on things. And it's, I, I was actually blown away for it. And it's, and it says that, you know, it's not for human consumption, that, you know, but people are using it. I, I, was, I was actually really concerned about this being in the public and people being able to use it. I mean, like some of the side effects is rapid heart rates, violent behaviors, feeling suicidal. I mean, I, it's, I don't know how they would allow this to be on the... On well, the that's the thing, shelves. right? Um, the public doesn't know. I mean, right. you go to the recall board at your local grocery store and there's a half a dozen or more recalls on the board, guaranteed. Right. You wouldn't know that unless you went looking, right? right? I mean, we hear about Jif peanut butter only because it's Jif. I mean, <laughs> right. if, it, if it was some little local brand, yep. you know, you would, it would be on the recall board and there might be a sign where you would have found it at that local right. store. Hey, if you bought this, there's a recall. But that, other than that, you're not, it's not like you're going to know. Right. You, and it could be from any, anybody can place a product on the shelf. It's not like, you know, I sell you a product, you place it on your shelf or your retail store. You, what do you, you just got a UPC code and how much it right. costs to sell right. it. That's you a, don't really care. Right. It's right. got a, you know, they don't even know if it's got a phone number on it. Right. As a major wholesaler in the, in the States here and out, you know, and also internationally, have you had companies that are looking for these, these synthesized cannabis oh, yeah. for wholesale? Matter of fact, that's probably a majority of the market that's holding up to see the hemp market right now. Is that right? People, either they're into Delta nine, which they're at 0.29% Delta nine, you know, so they're under the legal, but there's still 10 milligrams of THC in the, right. In the gummy. Right. Yeah. At some point, you have to say that that's going to get me high or not, right? Because, right. but it, so that's part of the hemp market now is how much can we skirt the Delta Nine market, and then all these other minor, you know, cannabinoids that get you high. Right. right. Um, I know in Florida they they can't keep this stuff on the shelf. Wow. I know uh, in Rhode Island there were some people advertising for Delta 8, selling it in stores. And I, I don't see the signs anymore. I don't know if there's a crackdown, but there now is a hemp office of regulations, which really talks about if you're going to retail, you have to go a certain process to get a license. And I've seen less of it now in terms well, of- Well, as a retailer, you really, I mean, Michigan, the sales tax license process takes about seven seconds. Is that right? That's it? <laughs> yeah, you just file for a sales tax license. And that's it. That's it. And done. And then you can sell it if you want. You can sell any technically over the you know good you know product you want. You can even sell medical devices and other things depending on you know. That's insane. That's insane. In Rhode Island, everything's regulated to the point there's a lot of red tape for everything, which is good and bad. But uh, for something like this, it's good. Now, local municipalities might have a regulatory licensing you know apparatus. Like in Michigan, you can't grow hemp. We can grow hemp anywhere. They can't really stop you. Right. Um, right. So if I wanted to grow out in my backyard, I just pay the money, get a license, and I can grow it. Right. Um, but marijuana, the local municipality has to approve it. Right. Totally different. Um, but you walk into a convenience store, these some of these, you know, gas stations. Right. They got questionable and shady products behind the counter. You know, they got everything from sex pills to you know what. Right. Like, I mean, who knows, right? And what does that stuff really do? And, and then they can have their Delta-8 cartridges right there too. Because you know, even if they don't promote it, it can, it's there. Right. If you go to a gas station, anything you buy in a gas station is not good for it. They sell soda, cigarettes. Now they're probably selling these products. For sure. And there's nothing good for you in a gas station. And nothing's regulated. And of course, the person behind the counter knows nothing about it. Other than, like you said, how to scan it and how do you take your money. And that's about it.
Yep. And if they do know a little bit more about it, you know, it's because they've educated themselves or they've tried it, right? Right, right. Um, but like the CBD stores in Michigan, you can go into a CBD store in Michigan and, and buy stickers. And then they'll ask you what you want with your sticker. Right. Because it's unregulated Is that marijuana right? that they really? give you for free. They sell you the sticker for fifty dollars, but the uh, but the gift that comes with the sticker, right? You know, <laughs> it's it's silly. It's, it's no, it's, I do remember when it first came out a couple of years ago, and I I didn't want to get anything into anything into that. For me, I want to use the CBD for the medical medical aspect of it. I don't want a product to give to people that's psychoactive. And then there was a little push in this in Rhode Island about selling it. You could see signs on doors, and they've kind of all gone away. And I'm not sure the reason. We are going recreational in December, December 1st in the state. That's something new. So that'll change some of that Delta 8 market because they can get, you know, regulated cannabis. But that's the other thing. Can they get it, even if it's right. legal? Right. That's right. So in Michigan, we're in, we promote health and wellness. You know, med spas, chiropractors, you know, acupuncturists, right. gentlemen like yourself. You know, that those are you guys are our customers. Right. You know, if we wanted to sell into the head shop, we I could have sold so much Delta Eight. Right. I mean, right? I would I could have brokered it, not even touched it. <laughs> right. You send it right to Florida. Right. You send it right there. You don't. You don't have to touch it. I mean, right from Colorado to Florida. We didn't even have to keep my hands dirty, but ethically, I can't put my hands on that product. Are there companies that are just making this type of CBD? Oh, this kind of, for sure. They're not doing the. You know. The, you remember, there was eight times more CBD grown in twenty. 19 that was going to be consumed wow and if you have all this isolate sitting right. around that's now virtually worthless right you can convert it to a substance that people are willing to pay you five to seven times what they would have had it been cbd wow would you monetize on that uh, yes sir you would if you so if, is it a is it a long process to do that to take it so i'm not the chemist you? right but from what i've been told is you make cbd with certain acids Right. And you have your chemistry set, right? And beakers and all the things. And on the other side of that comes out Delta-8. Right. And then how they clean it up, it's a whole different process. Because then you got to remove the acid from the Delta-8. And then, again, that's way beyond my pay grade. Right. All I know is if it's not done right, yep. you can get sick. Right. Get really, um, a lot of people are telling me that they feel that, that they believe that they're feeling stuff not based on the Delta-8, but based on what else is in it. That's crazy. You don't, know what, you don't know what that is. It could be anything. So think about let's so think about a little like say a three ounce bottle of CBD could be between fifty and hundred bucks. How much would a Delta Eight be at that size? Would they they could sell it so much more because of well, the they put in gummies, but it's cartridges and you know it's more vape and you know the stuff that they can you know monetize it. So they're selling one ml for 25, 30 bucks. Oh, they yeah. You know or more. Right. Well, comparable, to, comparable to the marijuana prices. Right. So that's what they, they're comparing it more to the marijuana prices, which again is much more than the CBD prices. So I can go make 20 bucks selling this cartridge right. all day long because everybody wants to, you know, recreate. Right. Right. No, but I, who knows what, you know? It's like people that say they've taken my products and then failed the drug test, but they won't right. tell you that they actually smoked marijuana the week before. Right. right. There's, there's really an under, there's zero chance that you have that much THC in your system, sir. Sorry. Right, right. right. Um, you just have to bathe in our products, but <laughs> you know, um, but it there is, is, this a, place, is a major issue. There is a place for the natural cannabinoids, in my opinion. The medical, there's recreational, fantastic, mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Call it what it is, but at the end of the day, regulate it. Right, right. You know, I'm all in for being Delta 8. But you better know what you're doing. You better be certified on how to extract that stuff and convert it and do it properly. What, what's the end result? And you know, if you look at a lab report of delta eight, it's going to show you that there's delta eight in it. Right. But what's the other percentage? It doesn't no, tell no. you what the other stuff is. It could be heavy metals, it could be it could be anything. It could be cyanide. The states that should be worried most about this, I would assume it's the states that don't have recreational marijuana because somebody's looking for something. Yep. So if there's recreational marijuana, you're going to go to that dispensary. But if there isn't, now you're, I'm looking for Delta A because I'm looking for that high. Yep. And I can get for that or, you know, Texas and Florida for sure. Right. And then there's a few states that have cracked down on it. But then again, like Oregon and California and Washington all have recreational. Right. 
So it's a different, you know, they make a lot of it because they grow a lot of hemp. Right. But they export it out of their states to these states that don't have a regulated marijuana market. Right. So if we made it all recreational, the whole country, we'd probably get rid of this. Oh, absolutely. Why? Nobody would want. Right. There would Nobody be want zero it. reason. Right. Unless it was for illicit. And they were selling it illicitly because it still is cheap to convert. You know, you, you are, you know, you've already got a substance in overabundance. So why wouldn't you want to convert that to something that you can monetize? Because there's always people that are opportunists, right? Oh, absolutely. When it comes to money, what do you, absolutely. Like you definitely did open my eyes because I never thought of Delta 8 as a synthesized cannabinoid, but the way you're describing it and reading about it and all the side effects, it's, it's something. Again, those side effects have probably have nothing to do with the Delta 8. It's what, what else so. is in it? You know, a delta eight occurs naturally at like 0.02% of the plant. That's it. Right? You know, it's trace amounts, which is fine. It probably needs to be there for the entourage effect. I'm all right, in. Right. right. But at 78.4% or 62 or 85 or whatever your concentrate is. Right. What's the other percentage? Then you're going to blend it with something else, I'm sure. Right. Right. To make a gel cap or, or whatever, because they sell them in soft gels, they sell them in gummies, they sell, mm -hmm. they sell it all over the place. Right. Different format. So, um, but we've never, I mean, people have sent me samples of it here before Michigan. I mean, I right. threw away more Delta 8 samples than I can. <laughs> um, but it is what it is, right? Um, yeah. Delta 10 is the new thing. It's supposed to be four times more potent than THC. I honestly have never heard about Delta 10. You're the first person I've heard Delta 8, but not Delta 10. Well, there's a half a dozen other ones coming too. There's this HHC mm -hmm. and THC O acetate. It's already there. It's already out. Right. I've already been offered it at trade shows, even. Really? Yeah, I was at the Texas Hemp Convention, and they were supposed to make all these cannabinoids a no-no. And then four hours, four days before the actual convention, they changed their mind because I wasn't going to go. I didn't want to compete right. without. That wasn't my market. My market's right. hemp. Let's talk. Right. It's, right. You know, Amazing. That part of it's you know marijuana light has taken over the hemp industry, right? Because I, I too do agree with it. it's that gray area you can get around the whole regulations. I mean the whole, the whole industry technically was based on a gray area when it, you know since some court ruling said CBD or you know hemp derived cannabinoids are legal, but there was no regulation. So that's how I started. That was very gray. Right. Right. <laughs> you know. Amazing. I know. I don't know, but no, this is definitely eye-opening for me too. Like you, you actually, what you did was you made me research it because I was, I was, when I heard you mention, let's talk about synthetic cannabinoids. The first thing I thought was Marinol, you know, the pharmaceutical marijuana, which I've had some patients take and there's so many side effects to it because it truly isn't natural. And that's what I thought initially when I started researching it. And then when you, I looked more into it and man, it's definitely not regulated and it is a consumer issue for people that are not educated. And, I, and I'm, I feel like I'm educated. I knew nothing about it. Can you imagine we a lay person going into existed. the store and getting this? But if you see anything that says Delta A, Delta 10, THC, anything in your state, and it's not in a marijuana dispensary, right. you can always walk in, buy some and send it to a lab and have it tested. What's in right. this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides you know, all the nasty stuff, but it, there's also unknown substances in these things. Right. Yeah. But That's when you problem. convert one substance to another, there's always byproducts. Right. What are those byproducts? You know? So, right. you know, I don't personally sell that stuff. I don't promote it. Um, anybody that calls, I tell them I don't sell poison. I'm like, this isn't poison. <laughs> like, well, would you drink the acid that you used to make the, it with and if the answer is right. no it's probably poison right exactly what do you mean acid i mean i'm talking to a salesperson yeah, right right, right. Just, yeah just that one for dollars you right. know they don't have no idea some of the stuff that they're doing so well you're well educated they don't really they think you know they think they're going to talk to some guy say hey we can make you a lot of money you're just going to go with it they don't realize how educated you are in this field well that's the other thing in michigan i'm like you can't buy this stuff in michigan well why not uh, it's illegal no it ain't yes it is you know and then they want to argue with me so, I know, I know. Well, you could look on your website. You have amazingly all the, the laws of all the states, which is a great synopsis from place to place. It's awesome. Well, thank you. We actually are in the process of having it updated right now. So the whole website is getting a revamp. 
No, because you were, like I said last time we talked, you were right on the changes in just CBD and retailing that you required. And you had a, you were up to date just as long, just as much as I knew, knew it, um, because it was, it started December last year. So it's a, uh, it's a great website, but well, thank I, you. So great. Like what, what, what's the next thing you want to talk about? Cause you are so educated on this stuff and passionate. Well, how can we get more people like you to talk about this stuff without it being a, a dirty word, or, know. you know, I, bad connotation. Um, or I can't see you because you're willing to try something that's not prescribed. Right. The main thing for me is learning more. That's why I like talking to people like you, getting the education out there, making sure that people that use it are using the right stuff and it's safe. I mean, that's, and that's part the other part is what about the Chinese CBD you can get? I mean, I can get a thousand milligram bottle from China delivered. Well, before COVID, it was delivered. I don't know what it is now, but it was like six <laughs> bucks a bottle. That's it. Right? I couldn't even make it for that in the U.S. Amazing. In, in China, CBD is illegal, but yet they're selling. They're you know they're shipping it by the cargo container over here. So, you know. Amazing, amazing. But who knows? You know who knows what's in it? Well, no that's testing it. It's not just what's in it, it's how is it made, how is it right. extracted, what's it grown in, what else is in the bottle that's not being tested for. Mm -hmm. I mean, we only test as a as a um, industry, mm -hmm. what people are looking for is that cannabinoid profile. Right. Does it have how much CBD it says it has? Right. We're not, right? right. Um, we're not doing a full you know panel test on every product we make. I mean, why would we do an herbicide pesticide test? Right. You know, the other raw materials should have all those tests done to them before we get them. And we, they do, right, by the manufacturing parties. But nobody, the, the average person is not going to go look at 40 different lab reports and go, oh, this is awesome. And nobody in their right mind is going to spend a thousand bucks on a production run to have it tested for all these things that it shouldn't be in there anyway. Right, right. You know, I mean, when we get our raw material in from the farm, we have it tested to pieces. Right. But that's because we have it tested. We, we want to make sure that that raw material is coming in as sold. But these larger food manufacturing distribution houses, we don't have time or resources to test all of those right. ingredients. Right. It, it costs you 300 bucks a bottle. Right. Um, you know, but so that's part A, right? So I see a cannabinoid test that says, oh, it's a thousand milligrams, or there's 1100 in here, and I, fantastic. Right. Are you sure it's the same lot number? What else is in there? I mean, if it's 1,100 milligrams of CBD in the bottle, fantastic. There's another 28 milliliters of something. Right. And if it was concentrated, would I be able to detect it? And if I diluted it 28 to 1 like it is, now what isn't detected? Mm -hmm. That's the other part of the equation. What's not detected in here that still exists in here? Right. It's like broad spectrum. I don't know if you've heard of broad spectrum products. Right. It's, it's they remediate the THC out of it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. They use a process called high pressure liquid chromatography. Not sure if you're familiar. It's a little above my pay grade, but <laughs> there's chemicals used in that as well. Right, right. So if there's a chemical used in the process, how is that being properly removed? And are they testing for that prior to you know prior to shipping? So, you know, but that's chemically removed THC. And then what what do they do with all that? Right. That goes out in the uh, uh, wastewater, we'll call it. Yeah. Right. So you get 0.28% THC and you got two metric tons of product. It's a meth, you know, there's a lot of THC floating around. That's what I was going to just say to you. Like they're taking the THC at isolates and broad spectrum CBD products. I'm sure they're using it to make something else. Oh, it's going in the wastewater. That's what, that's what I was told. Is that it wasn't our wastewater. Told. Yeah. You think so? No. I, I think they're using it, right? To make something else. They're probably selling it by the five gallon bucket yeah. cash. Yeah, exactly. Here's 20,000 in cash for this 100 gram worth of THC. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, right. <laughs> they're making cartridge, you know, handmade right. illicit cartridges in random states. Right. I, I know it goes on too, but again, I'm in a regulated state. I wouldn't trust anything that doesn't come through a regulated channel. And then I'm not sure if I trust that either. What states, I, I, you know, Michigan's very re regulated. What other states are very regulated that you know? Or, uh, Oregon, Washington, uh, California definitely have some, have all of the, uh, Nevada. Now, I don't know how the regulation is in Nevada, but they have dispensaries everywhere mm -hmm. in Nevada. Um, 
And there's a few other states that have went over the line. There's like 16 states now. But I can't, I, I don't keep up with marijuana law because I can barely keep up with hemp law. Right. So, you know, I, I would love the FDA to come out with some rules. I'd love the, the House of Representatives to pass the, the you know, some, some, some packages that would just make it simple. Because right. technically, the way CBD is classified, it's an adulterated food. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I so see more like when, when you go into the on the package, but yet they're telling you with a wink and a nod to consume it. Right. right. When you look at the, uh, the there's, there used to be this huge book of all medications, but they put cannabinoids under supplements. That's how they describe it. They don't describe well, it. was in the pharmacopoeia in 1932. Was if it, you find it? If you can find a pharmacopoeia prior to 1930, it'll be in there. It'll be in there. Yeah, Upjohn was one of the largest manufacturers of cannabis. It was an 80% of all pharmaceuticals prior to it being outlawed. Is that right? Yeah, they used up. to call it cannabis. So, it yeah, so the doctors freaked out when they made marijuana. They were like, whatever, marijuana can be illegal. They didn't realize marijuana and cannabis were the same thing. <laughs> until it was too late. Right. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, it was perfectly legal. It was used for tens of thousands of years in China and everywhere around the world. I do know that. I do know. I do know that they use marijuana uh, in England for migraines for all the royal family. I did read about that as well. I mean, it's been used for centuries. And cannabis was even in the um, poison garden in England when I was there. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't actually have a plant there. They had a cage that was empty. I'm like, oh, that's fun. So oh, funny. When we were at the Blarney Castle, they have a poisonous garden, which, believe it or not, most of the plants in there, I'm like, I have that at home, that at home, that at home, that grows. And, you know, <laughs> there's just plants that we, you know, but yeah, don't yeah. we don't eat them. Right. For a reason. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, the, the history of cannabis is an interesting one. And I think a lot of it had to do with the Industrial Revolution, the fact that, there was now machinery that could process hemp that didn't happen before. But you, if you owned a million acres of pulp trees and you printed a newspaper for a business, you don't want your pulp trees to be worthless. Right. You want them to be worth money. So hemp's got to go away. Right. And, oh, wait, there's people down south are doing these weird things with this stuff called marijuana. Wait, they look the same. Let's just lump it all together. <laughs> Right, easy. You can't patent a plant. I mean, well, I guess they have now, but right. you know, true, you know, true life is, you know, you can't be patented. Right. You know. Right. True. Uh, and hemp grows like a weed. So. I mean, I I always with people that I meet that grow marijuana, I, I find it they I find it hard to grow. I mean, I know you say it's a weed, or, but so so the I stuff that grows like outdoors. Yeah, it, well, it, it's, it's pretty hardy, right. but if you're growing it under specialized conditions for flour, mm -hmm. then yes, it's got its challenges, right. Right? right? Climate and pests and all the other things and nutrients, you got to know what you're doing. But in general, um, it just grows like, it just grows but crazy. If you get the old Indian hemp that used to grow for rope and for, mm -hmm. you know, other things, it just pretty much grows. It just grows. doesn't mean it's going to be perfect based on the weather conditions, you know, right. but it and every cannabis family is different. They all grow at different altitudes. They're all different climates. But it's been so bastardized and crossbred now. Who knows? <laughs> Russia's got all of, all of the genetics from the world. When they made it illegal, Russia came around and took all the hemp genetics they could find. Is that right? Yeah. There's even hemp strains in Lithuania that used to grow like 35 meters or feet or something in one season. I mean, Incredible. they use a tree one year. I've seen pictures. You can totally do a documentary just on hemp. I'm telling I've, you. I've got most of this from the internet. I mean, there is a book that you should read called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. Okay. It's on the internet. It's free. It's a PDF. It's, yep. I think it's the Emperor Wears No Clothes dot com or dot org or something, but Google right. it. I'm going to Google it. It's a good read. All right. I'm going to start with that. Oh. Uh, stuff's all very interesting. You know, Henry Ford built a car out of it in the 30s, even ran on hemp fuel. Really? Yeah. Now, with that, that to Henry Ford hemp car, you can watch him take a sledgehammer to it. 
Maybe that's the next thing that should happen. Hemp fuel, the way that gas prices are. Hemp fuel. No, seriously, hemp fuel, hemp fiberglass, hemp building materials, all exactly. are happening now. We just don't have the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, but we should be running our cars on mostly water at this point. I mean, we've already got the technology, mm -hmm. and then we have battery technology to a point that can hold the charge. Right. So, it's I mean, we could literally make a Tesla run on water forever. Yeah. I mean, I would love to convert a Tesla to run on a water generator. We never charge it. You just turn this thing on and it keeps the batteries charged. Amazing. But it's a thing. My buddy used to get 12 miles to the gallon in a semi when he was trying to, when he was adding water to his semi. Hey, I'd love to add water and not gas the way it's going now. Uh, it's better for the environment. I know. The, no the exhaust is water. Weird. I know. The goal that the, the sea level is rising, right? We can we just start pumping that out and burning that for fuel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I definitely know it is. I definitely know it is. I was out on the Cape last week and I just hadn't been there a while. Man, the, the, the shore looks a lot less. I think the water's just higher, as you as you just mentioned. Oh my gosh. The but, earth goes um, in cycles, right? Yeah. We're, we're only here for a blip, so we only get to see a blip of the cycle. It's so true. It's so true when you think of that. All right, Jeff. Well, let me go. Great talking to you. Whenever you. It's a pleasure. Let's some... get some. Of, let's get some of my products in your hands. How do I do that so we can get you promoting some of this stuff? I definitely can. All right. I'm gonna. I'll send you my. Um, let me. I'll send you my address through the, uh, good. the email. I'll send you a goodie bag. You send me a goodie bag. I can start talking about it. No, definitely. Awesome. All right, Jeff. Great. Thanks, again, sir. Thanks Have an for awesome a great day. Time. You're really interesting to talk to. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.